Welcome to Linux in the Shell, episode 20, P-Grep and P-Kill. My name is Dan Washko, I'm going to be your host, and as always I'd like to thank Hacker Public Radio for hosting the website and contributing to the audio file. If uh, you're interested in wonderful stuff or want to contribute to Hacker Public Radio, head over to hackerpublicradio.org, see how you can contribute or to listen to some fantastic shows. We're going to talk about P-Grep and P-Kill today. I'm going to show you examples, so remember, head on over to the website, linuxintheshell.org, for the full write-up and to listen to the audio portion of the show, if you have not done so already. PGREP, process grep, allows you to search for processes and returns their ID. PGREP takes one absolute command or option, and that's the process name. So, let's, for instance, I'm going to look at PGREP for Chromium. And you see that it returns all the possible Chromium processes that I have running at the moment. So let's uh, let's step back a second here. Let me fire off a couple of X terms. You can see them down in the bottom there, and they'll soon disappear when I click over to here. You won't see them anymore. So if I do pgrep X term, you'll see that it returns the two process IDs of the different X term processes that are running. Now I can do pgrep L X term, and that allows me to do a full listing or a listing uh, of the process name as it is. So I get the process ID and the process name of pgrep. Uh, now I can do a, let me show you another thing. Let's say I want to do user bin X term. So I have started that instead of specifying X term, I provided the full path to X term. So now when I do pgrep with the dash A X term, I get the full command line instead of just the uh, process name. I get the full command line that's returned to me right here. So you see X term, X term, and user bin X term. That's what I use to execute X term with. Uh, I can do similar things with Chromium that I did before. pgrep Chromium returned all those processes, but if I do a, a full listing here, or list the name, now it shows I think the first 15 characters. You see right here Chromium, Chromium, Chromium dash sandbox, Chromium, Chromium, Chromium. So it's all the different Chromium processes name. Now I get a different listing here if I do A. I get a full listing. Now you can see, wow, look at that. There is a lot going on with Chromium, a lot of different processes. I get all the switches in here and those are returned. So that is the dash A option. So let's clear that screen off right now. Let's do a, a couple of options to limit or enhance the search results. Uh, pgrep X term, process IDs, pgrep, uh, do N, I'm going to do L or A also, X term, shows you the newest process. So you see right here, it's the last one that was started. Okay, and I could do pgrep, well, let me do uh, a x term there so you can see that these two match, that's the newest. And I could do pgrep dash oa x term and it shows the oldest process. So I can see the, the, the newest and the oldest, the most recent and the oldest process in the list. Chances are the most, uh, the oldest is going to be the first process and the newest is going to be the last process in the process list. I can do an exact match. Okay, so what do I mean by exact match? Well, let's look at my process list here. Alright, I got terms, I got next term, I got a whole bunch of different things in here that are running. Now, I can do pgrep a bin. Nothing there. pgrep. Well, let me step back. Let's, let's talk about one more option here. Uh, when, when I do a, a grep, pgrep term, you see uh, pgrep dash l term. It searches on any process name. And in this case, any process name right there with term in it. And, and uh, I can tell it to do a a search by fool with an F 
it does a full search on the process name. Now, when I did this before, do a full term on bin, I didn't get any results, but if I said it told it to do a full search on the command line, command name also, it's it's searching on this whole path now, the whole command line and all the switches. So before when there was no process called bin, so to speak, that returned any value. Now I'm getting, looking at the uh, full process list for bin. So it's coming back because all these have been in the command line. So I'm looking at the full command line now, what we're seeing there. So let me clear that out. pgrep dash, what else? Uh, X. X term. X, X is exact match. Okay? So it's only looking on an exact match of the process name, X term. All right? Now, if I do the F option there, I'm only getting back X term because it's doing an exact match on the full process list. To get the one I'm missing right here, 17644, I would have to do pgrep fxa user bin x term. And I get that one back, but I don't get the other ones back. That's because it's doing a full search, exact search right there. So it's doing exact. Be aware of that. All right. Now, my username is Dan pgrep u dan those are all the processes that are running under my user account Oop. user i'm going to do a full uh, a listing right there so these are all the commands processes that are running under my user account now my user id is 1000 it turns the same list uh, i can look in etsy group and I can see different groups, but my group itself is users, I believe. So that's 100. So I can do dash G for any process that's executed under my group, which there aren't any right now that are owned by my group. But that's what the... Oh, no, I'm sorry. Capital G would be the way to go, but there aren't any owned by my group. So if I run top and then I do a field... And let's go down to group ID, turn that field on, and get back in here. And let's see a different processes. Let's go uh, order by group ID. And we see uh, different things in here, like group ID 10, group 81. So let's, let's look at uh, pgrep group 10 listing. And I get all those that are running under the group ID of 10. And group ID of 10 is wheel group root I wonder why they're running under wheel group root no, I don't think something's up there anyway that that'll show you um, all the processes running under the uh, group ID of 10 now I go into full detail um, let's let's do this I don't think there's going to be a difference but if I use uh, Dan and do a count. There's 57 processes. If that's running under effective user ID, whereas I have 59 processes running under uh, just real user ID. And the difference between the two, head on over to the website. Um, effective user ID is the process the use the the, the the user ID the process is currently running under, whereas real user ID is a process that the uh, is is the user that the process was started as. So there's differences there. Head on over to the website to get those. You can always get the help options here with pgrep. We've covered a lot of these so far. Um, what is now time to look at? Well, delimiter. Let's, let's look at delimiter. pgrep, by default, um, I'm, not, I'm just going to do x term, is a new line after it. So if I did pgrep, delimiter, colon x term. Now it shows colons after them. I could do, if I want to do a colon space, space, put it in double quotes. Now I get colon space between them. P grep D comma, you know, x term. Whoop. P grep. That's not right. 
there we go see different ways that you can do that uh out, put the output out there um now let, let's move on to to kill p kill let's clear my screen here now you notice that i have uh, a couple of x terms running here i'm going to put them uh at the top layer here so that you can actually see them when i kill these okay so i'm running here now p grab x term right there but I want to do p grep a x term. Now what I want to show you here is I can run p grep x term and it's going to kill all three of these processes, all right? But let's let's look at some of the other options. Uh let's do p kill and I'm going to do a uh, full fax like I did before for x term. All right, and it's going to do a full exact match on just X term. Now when I hit enter, if I'm correct, it will only kill two of these. Oh! F, X, X term. Sorry. It only killed two. I didn't need the A in there because A is for output only. So it doesn't make sense to pass the A option to P kill. I just need the F, X. Now remember, F is for full path and X is to do exact match on the full path. Now if I do P grep X term right now, if I do a P kill X term, it will kill it. Watch. So it'll kill that one that was left over. That's because it's doing a search on just that full, just that process name and it's just matching anything. So, for instance, I got three of them running. You see, I don't need to put them at the top. Uh, if I do P kill E X term, it says all the ones that were killed. It echoes them out. So now I can do. Let's let's bring those up again. You see, I'm X. I got three X terms running there. If I did P grep term, you see I have three processes there. It's going to be all those X term processes. Remember, P grep A term. P kill a term. I don't need a. P kill term kills all those terminals just like that. So be aware of that. Anything that had term in there. If I did P kill bin, we'd be in trouble because I would lose my session. And that would not make Dan happy. Because it would ruin, I'd have to re record this whole thing. So that that is essentially examples of using P kill and P grep. Um, they work hand in hand, but they're kind of separate commands. They don't lead one into the other. One thing I had said, I had given an example, uh, p kill dash h for help. Almost the exact same options here. Uh, PID file and lock file. All right. I wanted to give an example here of how this is not applicable. Okay. X term, x term, x term. P grep X term. If I pass that to kill file, cat kill file, I have all those PIDs in there. Uh, you might think, based upon reading the man page, P kill F kill file, that I should now be able to kill all three of those because they're in the file. So if I hit enter, only one's gone away. P grep X term. All right, it only killed it only killed the first top one. All right? And even if I run that same command again, p kill x file, p grep x term, it hasn't done anything. Okay? Don't be confused by that. What this is actually pretty much for is files that are in var run dot pid or or similar things that you're going to pass a pid to. So if I did uh cat var run uh, SSHD PID or PID, just like that. You see that? Well, that wasn't very handy, but uh, you see uh, that has 483. So um, it, it only passes 
the PID the process ID only takes the first one. It's usually used for scripts. Okay. Uh, now also I talk about uh, whoop p kill h. I talk about log PID files right there. You can find those in var uh, var lock any lock files. I don't have a lock file going on right now. Um, so any if you do the dash l in conjunction with dash f and there's a lock file it will prevent it from being terminated so that's the way it goes uh, I still have two x terms running so uh, p kill x term they're gone so that's p kill p grep in a nutshell very handy commands get on over to the website to learn uh, more about the syntax and the examples that I showed and uh, how to use it and the bibliography if you want further information. My name has been Dan. This is episode 20 of Linux in the Shell. Thanks for watching.